Hi, and thanks for tuning in. My name is Igor Izatov, and I'm an enterprise solution architect at Amazon Web Services based in Sydney, Australia. I work with financial services customers in the region, helping them modernize and migrate their workloads to AWS. We'll be talking about mission critical applications a lot in this session, but before we kick things off, I would like you to pause and think about the critical systems that you interacted with last week or even today. You've probably made a few banking transactions and therefore interacted with a core banking system or a ledger. If you had to call emergency services, your call was routed through an emergency dispatch system. If you or your relatives are frontline essential workers, their COVID vaccine is tracked through a specialized system. If you have friends or relatives that are living overseas, you've probably used a video conferencing app or a money transfer service. We live in a digital world and the well-being of our employers, as well as our own well-being, often depend on technology and software. In this session, I'll talk about how Amazon Aurora, a cloud-native database service on AWS, can help improve reliability, address technical debt, and increase the pace of change of these most critical workloads. For almost three decades, customers typically built all applications against a single relational database, no matter the access pattern, size, or nature of data. But this has been changing, and today, one-size-fits-all databases are hardly ever the best solution for anything other than the most simple tasks. To explain this, let me dive into some of the recent macro level changes in application design and architecture. Back in the 60s and the 70s, mainframe was a predominant way of building application. The data and application code were coupled. Then in the 80s and the 90s, with the growth of the internet, applications started to become more distributed in nature, with client server and three tier architectures becoming dominant. However, the underlying data model remained predominantly relational or tabular, and the database itself remained a monolith. Fast forward to today, and applications are usually built in the cloud as microservices. Developers now have the freedom to choose a data store per individual service, and this choice is often dictated by the access pattern and the nature of data, and I often see developers using non-relational and relational data stores in combination. To summarize, using a single overburdened relational database to handle every single access pattern has in itself become an anti-pattern. To that end, the AWS database engine portfolio provides developers with categories of engines to choose from based on the use case, the access pattern, performance and scale requirements. The first category is relational for workloads requiring strong consistency and schema, such as a core banking system or an ERP. This is where Amazon Aurora fits alongside Amazon RDS with open source and commercial database engines. In the non-relational category, we have Amazon DynamoDB and MongoDB compatible DocumentDB. These databases allow developers to query data stored as JSON documents. As an example, you may consider going non-relational for a high-traffic gaming application that can tolerate eventual consistency. Other database categories include in-memory, graph, time series, ledger, and wide column. You may choose these for IoT, social networking, industrial telemetry, and supply chain scenarios, respectively. Having said all that, Relational databases are pervasive and aren't going anywhere anytime soon. In fact, most applications designed in the last 10 to 20 years rely on relational databases. Whether you're building or modernizing a workload that requires strong consistency and schema, I recommend Amazon Aurora, our relational database engine built for the cloud. We launched Amazon Aurora in 2015 as a managed cloud-native MySQL and Postgres-compatible relational database that is designed for performance, high availability, and durability. By separating storage from the database engine, Aurora can achieve the performance and availability of high-end commercial databases, 
while remaining simple and cost effective. To give you a data point, Aurora outperforms standard MySQL by a factor of five and standard Postgres by a factor of three. I would like to now give you a deeper look at Aurora's architecture. Aurora brings a cloud native architecture to the relational database, most notably by pushing redo processing to a multi tenant scale out storage service purpose built for Aurora. Doing so allows for fast crash recovery and high availability with a recovery point objective of zero, or in other words, zero data loss. Furthermore, Aurora's distributed storage is fault tolerant and self healing. Aurora partitions its dynamically expanding database volumes into small 10 gigabyte segments, replicating each segment six times across three availability zones, with two segments in each of the availability zones. The service then monitors and automatically heals these segments, and each segment can be repaired in under 10 seconds. Aurora's distributed storage uses a quorum model with six total votes with a write quorum of four and a read quorum of three. With such a model, Aurora can tolerate an AZ interruption while maintaining write availability or an interruption of an AZ plus one storage node without losing read availability. When a problem affects the primary database engine, one of the reader instances from another availability zone takes over. The process is known as a failover. Aurora detects database problems and activates the failover mechanism automatically when necessary, but a failover can be initiated by the customer as well. The process usually takes under a minute to execute and has an RPO of zero or zero data loss. Your applications aren't affected by the failover since the connection string stays the same when a new primary instance gets promoted. Since failovers can be customer initiated, you can now test your application's resiliency frequently as a business as usual activity. Aurora's resilient architecture is one of the key reasons why AWS customers are choosing Aurora for their most critical workloads. And I would like to share one such customer story. In December 2020, Hilton shared how they re-architected and migrated their central reservation system to run on Amazon Aurora with zero downtime and no impact to customers. Hilton's central reservation system is a good example of a mission critical application with almost 1 million rooms across 118 countries and territories managed through it. Millions globally depend on it to book their stay. It is directly responsible for generating Hilton's revenue. It has a global footprint and it transacts millions of business operations per day. In today's connected world, when a system such as this experiences interruption, people, whole communities and businesses can be impacted. It should come as no surprise that critical workloads usually have the highest reliability expectation and undergo rigorous testing when deploying changes. From a performance perspective, predictable performance at scale is key with as little fluctuation as possible. As I mentioned earlier, most applications designed in the last 10 to 20 years are likely going to have a relational database at their core. And AWS customers are choosing Amazon Aurora for these most critical workloads. I hope that by now I've been able to demonstrate how Aurora's novel architecture can help you build a more resilient application, the one that can tolerate an interruption of a full AZ plus additional storage node with zero data loss. At this moment, I should mention that, of course, architecture for reliability applies to all layers of the system, not just the database alone. And in this part of the talk, I would like to somewhat broaden the scope and talk about how time and business growth may negatively affect the reliability posture of your application. Over time, as businesses grow and expand geographically, complex data replication topologies are often introduced in an attempt to scale out the relational database monolith and distribute it geographically. 
I've seen cases when application queries competed with these replications, resulting in unpredictable replication delays, which in, in turn can cause unpredictable data loss in case of an interruption. All this replication complexity turns business continuity testing into big company-wide events. Just out of curiosity, when was the last time your business conducted a full BCP test without weeks worth of planning and preparations? You may start with a well-tested system, but over time, as your system's complexity increases, the impact of load-induced failures and soft failures becomes poorly understood. This situation is often exacerbated by the amount of business logic that is baked into the database in the form of stored procedures or triggers. And finally, as, as your system's complexity increases, your monitoring tools become more fragmented across infrastructure, database, and application layers, which all negatively affects your observability and slows down time to recovery. I can almost see you raising your eyebrows here and thinking, what does Aurora have to do with these? Well, let me explain. Just as it is the case with Hilton's central reservation system, your business may be geographically distributed. To reduce application to database latency, Amazon Aurora Global Database natively supports one-to-many replication topologies with up to five secondary regions. The replication occurs at the storage level with no impact to performance. It leverages the AWS global network, achieving predictable sub-second cross-region replication latency. You are in full control of choosing the secondary regions you're replicating to. For example, if your data cannot leave Australia, you can enable replication to the upcoming Melbourne region. Aurora Global Database also helps increase your application reliability by providing disaster recovery from a rare event such as a full AWS region disruption. One of the secondary regions in the Aurora Global Database cluster can be promoted to read and write capabilities in usually less than a minute. Or in other words, in case of a full AWS region disruption, you will be able to resume your database operations within minutes. I mentioned how over time, the impact of load-induced failures and soft failures becomes poorly understood which negatively impacts your application reliability. With Aurora, you can continuously keep your application on its toes, so to speak, by performing high availability, stress, and volume testing natively. These can be triggered by issuing simple SQL commands, assuming your role has sufficient permissions. You can schedule a high availability test by interrupting a node. This will force Aurora to automatically initiate a failover with zero data loss. You can stress test your application by disrupting an arbitrary percentage of requests on Aurora read replicas. Or you can choose to disrupt an arbitrary percentage of attached storage. You can also perform a volume test by simulating congestion on Aurora's distributed storage. These mechanisms allow you to observe how your application responds to these conditions and make it more reliable and resilient. By simulating real-world conditions, you can uncover latent bugs, monitoring blind spots, performance bottlenecks, all of which are notoriously difficult to pinpoint in complex systems. I mentioned that over time, your monitoring tools may become fragmented across infrastructure, database, and application layers, which negatively affects observability and slows down time to recovery when incidents do happen. Companies that modernize their applications on Aurora use Aurora Performance Insights to collect and analyze database performance and identify issues that may be affecting it. With the Performance Insights dashboard, your teams can visualize the database load and slice it by database weights, SQL statements, hosts, or users. If your team prefers to use third-party or native MySQL or Postgres tools, run books, or health monitoring scripts, these can continue to be used with Aurora. Now, moving up the stack to the application, your company can use AWS X-Ray to understand how the application and its underlying services are performing. X-Ray builds an end-to-end -end view of requests as they travel through your application and presents a map of application components, API, and database calls. 
These observability tools, combined with the native Aurora high availability, stress and volume testing capabilities, help close the loop and continuously improve your application's reliability posture. It's important to implement these incremental improvements early and often before they become technical debt. This brings me to the second topic today, which is technical debt. A common dilemma with mission critical systems is that any change is often perceived as potential source of disruption and organizations often choose to make as little of it as possible. This causes technical debt to pile up, which in turn reduces business agility, erodes return on investment and increases exposure. When I talk to lead engineers and system owners about technical debt, there is a surprising number of common themes that I would like to discuss here. Chances are, if you're dealing with a system that has celebrated its 10th or even 20th anniversary, you'll have some non-relational data in a relational database. It likely made its way there during the rapid growth phase of your application some time ago, and is now likely to be causing performance issues. It's also likely that there'll be quite a lot of business logic baked into the database, usually in the form of stored procedures and triggers. This in-database logic can cause application scalability and maintainability issues. Plus, finding good database developers is getting increasingly harder and harder. I also commonly see relational database being used as a durable topic or a queue. While it maybe was a great idea at the time, now it's likely to be causing headaches because of the congestion it creates on the database. You're also likely to be exporting data from your system for analytics. But the business stakeholders are no longer happy with once a day extracts. They want their reports to be refreshed in near real time, which can be difficult because of the performance impact it will have on your application. These examples of technical debt are especially common in mission critical systems. Systems that have been preserved in time and not kept up to date with evolving design thinking, architectural best practices and tools. By now you may be wondering again, how can Aurora, a managed relational database service, help address these? Well, customers also choose Aurora to modernize their applications on because of Aurora's native integrations with other AWS services. These integrations enable engineering teams to gradually introduce cloud native capabilities around the edges of the old system. For example, Customers with lots of non-relational data sitting in a relational database can choose to offload XML or JSON data to Amazon DynamoDB using Aurora's event-based integration with AWS Lambda. These events can be as granular as a single row delete, update, or insert. That old design decision to use the database as a queue can be modernized by introducing Amazon SQS to your architecture via the same Lambda integration. For real-time analytics, you can leverage Redshift Federated Query to analyze data from Aurora without ETL-induced delays. To make sure that analytical queries do not impact your application's performance, I recommend you to leverage Aurora read replicas. For your data lake, you can stream changes out of Aurora to S3 using AWS Database Migration Service, or DMS for short. And for more advanced patterns, like event sourcing, you can stream changes to Kafka out of Aurora using DMS. I'd like to emphasize how without lengthy application refactoring, you can start reducing your technical debt by introducing cloud native patterns around your core application that runs on Aurora. But what if I now were to tell you that Aurora can also help increase the productivity of your engineering teams? Have you ever been in a situation where you or your engineering teams had to wait for hours or days to get their development environments refreshed from production? Or maybe you had to roll back a failed release because it was tested on a stale environment? Or maybe you had to spend an extra few months planning and perfecting a release, knowing that rolling it back would mean an extended outage? I agree that mission critical applications by definition require a heightened level of scrutiny to ensure that releases are free of errors. The releases themselves are expected to incur zero or near zero downtime. 
The same expectations holds true for when a release needs to be rolled back. Unfortunately, when I talk to customers, it's not uncommon to see non-production environments running a few versions behind or ahead of production because of the effort and time it takes to refresh them. These inconsistencies cause limited testability that leads to errors in production, that lead to service interruption and rollbacks. And if a rollback involves undoing a database schema change, this may take a long time. Let's see how Aurora can help address these to ultimately help increase your team's productivity and pace of change. By way of example, let's take an imaginary money transfer service. Let's call it any company Insta Money. The lead engineer is planning a global database maintenance task to separate the UK customers from the EU for compliance. Unfortunately, errors do happen and the script makes a destructive change marking all customers as UK customers. The company is now looking at a prolonged downtime while the multi-terabyte database is being restored from Snapshot. With Aurora MySQL, the company can perform a backtrack operation. Backtracking helps rewind the database cluster to the specified time without performing a point in time restoration. The backtrack operation happens in place and happens quickly. As part of a post-incident root cause analysis, the lead engineer realized that the maintenance task failed because of a schema inconsistency between non-production and production environments. She takes an action to ensure any non-production environment can be fully refreshed from production at any time. She expects a pushback because the production database size is measured in terabytes. Well, with Aurora Fast Cloning, she can quickly create a clone of an Aurora cluster containing all its data. Creating a clone is faster and more space efficient than physically copying the data using a snapshot. The way Aurora performs cloning without physically copying the bits is by leveraging a copy and write protocol. Initially, when a database is cloned, both databases reference common pages on the Aurora shared distributed storage. Clones are isolated writable Aurora instances. New storage is only allocated when data changes, either on the source cluster or the clone cluster. Engineers soon realize that they can use database clones to performance test individual features on a full size database. This can lead to an increase in code quality and reduction of rework because each feature is now tested against a full dataset. Sometime later, the engineering team realized they can also use Aurora Fast Cloning to perform complex maintenance operations on a database clone and then promote it to production, streamlining the cutover process. I would like to emphasize here that these are only a few examples of how Cloud Native Aurora can help encourage experimentation in your team, improve test coverage, and streamline deployments across your most critical applications. Together, we covered a lot of ground today. Thank you for being an attentive listener. I kicked off this session with an overview of the AWS database engine portfolio, followed by Aurora's unique Cloud Native architecture. I then expanded on the role Aurora can play in improving your application's reliability through fast zero data loss failovers and global replication. I later spoke about technical debt and how Aurora can help address it through native integrations with AWS services such as Lambda, S3, DMS, and Redshift. I wrapped up by talking about Aurora's backtrack and fast cloning capabilities that can help streamline releases, encourage experimentation across your engineering teams, and increase the overall pace of change. As next steps, I recommend reviewing the Hilton reInvent session and getting your hands dirty with Amazon Aurora Labs. I encourage you to read about the recent innovations in Aurora, for example, the Aurora Serverless V2 engine. And as always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to your AWS Solutions Architect. You can keep learning beyond the summit with resources from AWS training and certification for databases. 
I particularly recommend starting with the database overview course that provides a good foundation for learning about the AWS database engines portfolio. For more information, visit aws.training forward slash databases. I thank you for tuning in and I sincerely hope you found this session useful. Please do not forget to complete the session survey and let's go build.